All right, welcome to episode 8 of Tornado Facts with Beanrock124. Today's episode, about the 1980 Grand Island Tornado Outbreak on Tuesday, June 3rd, 1980. This outbreak is also known as the Night of the Twisters. It was a tornado outbreak that produced a series of destructive tornadoes that affected the city of Grand Island, Nebraska. Seven tornadoes touched down in or near the city that night, killing five people and injuring 200. The name generally referred to by Grand Island area residents for the event, The Night of the Twisters, comes from a semi-fictionalized book of the same name, loosely based on the tornado outbreak. Uh, this one is, uh, the book is by author Ivy Ruckman, and that book was turned into a made-for-TV movie that premiered on Freeform Channel in February of 1996, a few months before Twister release, I think. Now, I've read the book and watched the movie. They follow the same line, so, same storyline, so... I recommend watch, doing, um, reading the book and watching the movie. While the outbreak is best known for the Grand Island Tornado family on June 3rd, the event as a whole produced 29 tornadoes across two days, causing severe damage as far east as Pennsylvania. In addition to the five deaths that occurred in the Grand Island area, the outbreak injured a total of 413 across seven states. So the outbreak began on June 2nd, producing strong tornadoes in the Iowa, Indiana, and Ohio areas, including one that struck the east side of Indianapolis. One fatality occurred near Crawfordsville, Indiana. Tornado activity continued on June 3rd with additional strong tornadoes touching down in Pennsylvania, Maryland, West Virginia, and Nebraska. Over the span of three hours on June 3rd, 1980, a slow-moving supercell complex moving across the Grand Island, Nebraska, spawned several tornadoes. The resulting outbreak was one of the most unusual in the U.S. history, just like the one that I talked about in last episode, the Lamont area tornadoes, or that outbreak, I'll link it somewhere. The supercells moved over the city at only 8 miles an hour. Of the seven tornadoes, three of them were anticyclonic, and the tornadoes did not move in a straight line, with most of them looping over back their own path at least once. Now here's a, pa uh, here's a picture of the tornadoes. Um, so tornado number one is off screen, but it's a really erratic path. So it goes, I believe, this way. So it's cyclonic. The way my mouse is going is the way that the tornado was going. So then tornado number two it was, uh, was an, the first anticyclonic one. Goes this way. Tornado number three goes this way. Tornado number four, anticyclonic, I believe, goes this way. Tornado number five, which is cyclonic, goes this way. And then finally, tornado number six goes this way. Yeah, crazy. And then, oh yeah, tornado number seven. Uh, you go here, woo. It's like you're, it's like a four-year-old drawing a map. So, there's that. Here's the list of tornadoes. No unrated tornadoes. 2F0, 11F1, 9F2, 4F3, and 3F4. No F5 tornadoes. Here's the first uh, F4 tornado that touched down on June 2nd. It was a 140-yard wide tornado. It was on the ground for 31.2 miles. And it completely destroyed a farmhouse near Davis City, Davis City, Iowa, and unroofed a fertilizer plant. And here's June 3rd. Uh, an F4 touched down in Harrison Township, Pennsylvania. It was somehow 10 yards wide. It was on the ground for 11.8 miles. Now let's talk about uh, the Grand Island tornadoes. Uh, there were seven. One F uh, two F3s, one F2, three F1s, and one F4. This is the first one. Touched down 11 miles northwest of Grand Island. First of seven tornadoes that hit the city in just over two hours. Farms outside the town were torn apart, and a woman was killed while trying to trying to drive to a relative's house. 25 others were injured and caused an estimated $2.5 million in damage. Although the straight line and official path of the tornado was only about 7 miles, the actual length was over double that at 14.5 miles because the track was highly unusual in it that it looped, around, looped and crossed itself numerous times while spending 49 minutes on the ground. Yeah, 49 minutes on the ground, 6.4 mile track, 700 yards wide. Next one, first anticyclonic tornado, it was a F1. F1, 150 yards, was on the ground for 12 minutes, 0.8 miles. This is the first anticyclonic tornado that touched down in the northern, ends, northern edges of Grand Island, just east of the first tornado. Of course, second of seven to hit the city, uh, caused an estimated $25,000 in damages and five injuries. 
Uh, F3, 500 yards wide, was on the ground for 25 minutes, 2.3 miles. Uh, this one also caused one death and touched down north of Grand Island and moved into the city near Airport Road. Between U.S. Highway 281 and Webb Road. This is the third of seven tornadoes to hit the city in just over two hours. This tornado injured 40, killed one, like I said up here, and caused an estimated two and a half million in damages. Although most damage was rated F0, several homes are heavily damaged and some F3 damage was noted near the veterans home, which had some windows blown out. This is the second of three anticyclonic tornadoes. All three of them happened back to back to back. While the, uh, pash, uh, pa bleh, while the path is officially listed as 2.3 miles, 3.7 kilometers, the distance covered by the tornado was 3.5 miles due to its curving nature. Here's the final anticyclonic tornado, F1, 100 yards wide, was on the ground for 4 minutes, 2.3 miles. Uh, tornado touched down southeast of Grand Island and moved toward the southwest, west, and north. The final of the anti final three, uh, final of three anticyclonic tornadoes. Here's the strongest tornado of the entire uh, outbreak. It caused three deaths. It was the fifth of seven tornadoes that hit the city. The tornado touched down just east of Grand Island, then moved west into the city. Once within the city, the tornado turned south and followed Locust Street, which is kind of what the main tornado in the book talked about or covered I should say in the book um, and also in the book I don't want to say spoilers but at the end they talk about having a five mile wide tornado I assume it's this one talk about this F1 that's 2,000 yards wide but eh. so the tornado followed Loka Street and caused some of the most intense damage of the entire outbreak to businesses and neighboring residences, some of which were obliterated. Numerous homes, vehicles, businesses, trees, and power lines were destroyed. Damages exceeded $200 million and 110 people were injured. While the path length is listed as 1.1 miles, 1.8 kilometers, the curving path of the tornado covered a distance of 6 miles or 9.7 kilometers. Here's the sixth tornado to hit Grand Island, F2, 1,700 yards wide. It was on the ground 10 minutes or 3.4 miles. Uh, this large tornado touched down southeast of Grand Island, causing significant damage in rural areas. S this is the sixth of seven tornadoes to hit Grand Island. The tornado caused an estimated $2.5 million in damage and 18 injuries. While the official track is 3.4 miles, 5.5 kilometers, the curving path of the tornado caused it to travel a total of 6 miles or 9.7 kilometers. Now here's the final tornado of the outbreak and of the night. F1, 2,000 yards wide, on the ground for half an hour or 4.1 miles. A large tornado touched down southeast of Grand Island. This is the final tornado to touch down. The tornado caused an estimated $2.5 million in damage and two injuries. The tornado tracked across most of the rural areas and avoided many homes. While the official track is listed at 4.1 miles or 6.6 .6 kilometers, the tornado looped numerous times, causing it to travel a total distance of 13.4 miles or 21.6 kilometers. So after the tornadoes in Grand Island uh, occurred, they obviously all killed five in total and caused an estimated of caused the estimated damage cost of 285 million or 600 million dollars in 2003 dollars. In Nebraska, tornado warnings allowed people to get into safety in time, which prevented a higher death toll. The South Locust Street area in Grand Island was the hardest hit, struck by the fifth tornado of the night, an F4. And much of the rubble and debris left by the tornadoes was placed in a landfill that now forms Tornado Hill, a popular biking and sledding spot in Grand Island today. Now here's fictionalized accounts of the event. Of course, you got the book that was made in 90, uh, 1984. And then this one, it premiered on Valentine's Day 1996, just a few months before Twister came out, if I am correct. Uh, I will link these two in the description so you can read summaries about the book and the movie, respectively. But I'd like to finish off with damage from this tornado and a picture of what the tornadoes looked like during the outbreak. This, uh, let's get it here. In the picture, there are two independent tornadoes on the ground marked by large debris clouds at the ground level and are located a few hundred yards away from each other. The first smallest tornado, the first, the smaller tornado on the left is the first F1 to hit Grand Island, which is this one. And then the quarter mile wide tornado on the right is the second F3 to hit. Power flashes from electrical lines being destroyed from, by the ferocious winds illuminated the nighttime tornadoes. Creepy. Anticyclonic, anticyclonic. That is kind of creepy. So that is it for episode 8 of Tornado Facts with Binoc124. Episode 9 is about a tornado outbreak I can't remember the name of, but you'll see it next week. Goodbye.